Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing Leanne Lee's new Lankel 2 mesh. So I've had this case now for a couple of weeks. I've already done a full build guide in it with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build in this case. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to that in the description for you. What you won't have seen is all the thermal testing I've been doing behind the scenes. And I've actually tested 17 different configurations in this case thermally. So today I'm going to be answering the question, one, is this case any good and should you get it? And two, if you do get it, what is the best way to set it up to get the most from it? So the Lancool 2 mesh isn't a completely new case. It's really last year's Lancool 2 with a few revisions, mostly geared towards improved airflow and thermal performance. The biggest of which is the mesh front panel. It comes in two different versions. There's performance, which is available only in black and the RGB version, which I have here, which comes in black and white. The performance version comes with two 140mm fans on the front and a 120mm fan on the rear. These are PWM fans, just in black with no RGB, and the case has a built-in fan controller, and there's a button on the top of the front panel allowing you to adjust the fan speed. The RGB version that I have comes with three 120mm fans mounted in the front. These are three pin addressable RGB fans which look great and there's little buttons on the top of the case which allow you to adjust the RGB effect. So that's the two big differences between the versions. One has RGB fans with an ARGB controller. The other has PWM black fans where you can adjust the speed using the case controller. So when you look at the rest of the case a lot of it looks very familiar. On the front and back, you've got two tempered glass panels which are held on with magnets. So these will swing out to the side and then can be lifted off. Down below the two glass panels, you've got two little doors which fold down, exposing the power supply and the hard drive cage. What's new with the mesh version is the panel on the front has perforations in it, which are designed to help with airflow and in particular bring more cooler in for the GPU. Down at the bottom of the case, there is a hard drive cage which will accommodate up to three 3.5 inch hard drives or 2.5 inch SSDs. And this position of this can be moved. It's on a little bracket where you can slide it to the left or to the right. And although it's not designed to be fully removed, it can be fully removed to make more space for cables and improve airflow at the bottom of the case. Looking at the back of the case, it looks fairly familiar to last year's Landcool 2, and we've got two removable cable covers, which make the back of the case look good, given that it's going to be on display behind the tempered glass panel. So as well as being able to mount three drives in the hard drive cage, there's also space in the back of the case for an additional four SATA SSDs. So two of the drives can be on display behind the tempered glass panel, and also behind the little back panel that pops down there's space for additional two drives and these drives will be hidden from display. Not done there, there's also space for an additional two drives in the bottom of the main compartment of the case. And these drives can be installed directly above the power supply on a little mesh bracket. So what's new with the Lancol 2 mesh is that these brackets are now removable. So if you're going to install fans in the bottom of the case, instead of hard drives, you remove the brackets to improve airflow through the fans supplying cooler to the GPU. And this together with the other new changes this year has been designed to improve airflow throughout the case. For front IO, we've got two USB 3.0 type A ports. There's a cutout for the optional type C cable. We've got a combined audio jack, power and reset switch. And because we've got the RGB version of the case, there's two buttons to control the RGB effects. The first button lets you cycle through a range of static colours, while the second button lets you cycle through a range of dynamic RGB effects. And I think you'll agree these look great. The case also comes with a cable that you can plug into one of the addressable RGB headers on your motherboard, allowing your motherboard RGB software to control the case lights. And by the case lights, what I mean is the three fans at the front of the case, and also if you plug a light strip into the optional header on the case. Moving inside the case, there's plenty of space for lots of hardware in here. The case comes with a reversible cable cover bracket, 
that when you turn it round, makes space for EITX motherboards and still does a great job of covering up all the cables. It can support CPU coolers up to a maximum height of 176 millimeters and graphics cards up to a maximum length of 384 millimeters. When it comes to IIOs, you can fit a 360 millimeter radiator at the front. You can also have the option to do a 280 and a 240 at the front, while up top we're limited to just a 240 millimeter radiator. And again, there's a little bracket over where the radiator would go, which can be removed, allowing for large radiators and push-pull configurations with a maximum size of 110 millimeters. Again, Lian Li have stuck with the removable fan bracket at the front of the case. So this can be removed, allowing you to install your fans or radiator um, outside the case before sliding it back in at the end. And again, you've got lots of flexibility with this bracket. Um, you can install it in two different heights and you can rotate it round, meaning whatever's installed, the fans or radiator can either be further or closer to the front mesh panel. So one of the nice things about this year's case that I was able to install my AO at the front and still keep that optional radiator bracket on, which I wasn't able to do last year. And that was one of my criticisms of last year's case because having that radiator bracket off meant that any of the cables at the bottom of the case were visible. And I got a much cleaner build this year than I did last year by having the fans installed right at the front. As I already mentioned, when it comes to case fans, the case comes with three 120 millimeter ARGB fans at the front. You also have the option to mount two 140 millimeter fans. At the top of the case, you can have two 120 or two 140 millimeter fans. There's room at the rear for a 120 millimeter fan. And then down below the GPU, as we already mentioned, you have the option of two 120 millimeter fans, which are designed to be intake fans below the GPU improving thermal performance. Obviously getting fans screwed in here from underneath would be tricky, so Lee and Lee have provided some long screws to make installation easy. And as we already mentioned, the little brackets at the bottom of the case can be removed, allowing unobstructed flow to those fans. When it comes to dust filters, there's no dust filter behind the mesh front panel, again designed to improve air flow. There's one dust filter at the top of the case, which is magnetic, and removing it and putting it back is straightforward. It slots into place nicely. There's also one dust filter down beneath the power supply. The same five optional Landcool 2 accessories will work in the new Landcool 2 mesh, and that is the vertical GPU bracket. There's a support bracket for the GPU when it's mounted horizontally. The addressable RGB strip, which we have on the front of the case here. There's also a hot swappable back plate for the hard drive cage. Again, I didn't install that because I removed my hard drive cage. And then there's the optional USB-C 3.1 cable, which I have installed in this case. I'm running out of time, every day goes by so fast. And every moment counts, baby, I don't wanna miss a thing. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Under the stars
about the case and I think the first thing I really liked is the price so at the moment this case is selling for 80 pounds in the UK and when you consider all the features this case offers in particular the addressable RGB controller which is built in and the three adjustable RGB fans which are included which look really really good I think 80 pound price is a real bargain the next thing I really like about this case is the design I think it looks great, but there's so many smart features built into the case that make building in it really straightforward. I love the fact that the glass panels can be fully removed and the two panels at the bottom can be folded down. So there's loads of space to build in the case. When you consider as well, you've got the removable bracket for the radiators and fans at the front. So that can be installed outside the case and slid into place at the end. I think this is probably one of the easiest cases to build in and a perfect choice for a first time builder or a beginner. And then again, the other thing I really like is the options. Leanne Lee offered the five optional accessories for this case, which we've already mentioned. So you can include them or not include them. You can install your hard drives in a variety of positions, either on display or not on display. The uh, bracket at the front for the radiator and fans, you can install that in four different positions as well. The hard drive cage at the bottom, you can remove it or you can slide it into a whole variety of different positions. There's a bracket that can be rotated for an ATX motherboard or turned again the other way to accommodate an EATX motherboard. So there's so many options in this case. I also really love all the changes Lian Lee have made with this case compared to the original Lamcool 2. I think the front panel looks so much better and the included ARGB fans look great. And you get a much better looking front end of the case than the original Lamcool 2, in my opinion. Um, whether it performs better thermally, we're going to see later on in the video. Another thing I really liked about the Lamcool 2 mesh was the build quality. I had absolutely no issues at all with it. Um, the tempered glass panels open and close perfectly. And in fact, um, I find it much easier to remove and put back on than with the original Lamcool 2. I'm not sure if they've made any changes here or whether it was just variation between the two cases that I've had, but I find them really simple to get on and off. I had no issues with any of the screws threading or paint flaking anywhere in the case. Okay, so this brings me on to some of the things I didn't like about the case. And to be honest, I had to think long and hard to come up with two very small points. So the first is about the included case fans. I think these look great. The build quality is good. And I'll talk you through how they perform later on in the thermal testing section of the video. But the only thing I would like to have changed is I would much rather have had four pin PWM fans included than the three pin that Leanne Lee have decided to go with. The second thing I didn't like is whenever you use RGB fans at the bottom of the case, because the panel at the bottom now has perforations in it, the light coming off the fans lights up at the bottom of the case. So you can now see your power supply and all the cables coming from it. Whereas the design in the original Lancool 2 was these panels were solid and anything at the bottom of the case was hidden away. So you can obviously get around this by not using RGB fans at the bottom of the case. And the fans on the radiator and the light strip don't cause the same effect. Um, an alternative would have been to have had the solid panel at the front and the perforated panel at the rear, avoiding this problem altogether. Okay, so this brings us on to the bit everybody's been waiting for, the thermal testing. 
And like I said, I tested 17 different configurations to allow me to answer a number of important questions that you're going to want to know if you're thinking, one, of getting this case, and two, if you're deciding what components you're going to put in it to get the best cutting results. So I'm going to talk you through how I do my thermal testing before I come on to the results. So there's two different tests that I'm going to do. I'm going to check the idle temperature for both the CPU and the GPU, and then I check the temperature under load. For the idle temperatures, I leave the PC running in Windows with no programs running in the background and record the lowest CPU and GPU temperature over a 30 minute period. What I then do is run an IDA64 stability test with all the components in the PC being stressed. I do that for 30 minutes and record the highest CPU and GPU temperature. Um, importantly, the ambient temperature is controlled to 20 degrees C. Okay, so the first question I want to answer is, have all the changes Lee and Lee made with the new Lamcool 2 mesh actually improved thermals compared to the original Lamcool 2? So to try and answer that question, I set up my Lamcool 2 mesh exactly the same way as I had done with my Lamcool 2. So I had a deep cool 360 EX AIO in the front as intake. We had all the case fan locations occupied with two fans at the bottom set as intake and the other three case fan locations set as exhaust, so the top and the rear. And we used all LO120 fans for the case fans, but also on the AIO. So looking at the temperatures here, both the CPU and the GPU idled one degree cooler in the Lancol 2 mesh compared to the Lancol 2. While during a 30 minute IDA64 stability test, the CPU was two degrees cooler in the Lancol 2 mesh and the GPU was one degree cooler. Okay, so I think the results are fairly clear. The Lancol 2 mesh is definitely better thermal performance than the original Lancol 2. So how does that compare to some of the other cases that I have tested recently? It's important to say that I was testing exactly the same hardware in each of these cases. So that's a Ryzen 9 3900X CPU and a 2080 Ti Strix GPU. So when we compared the Lancol 2 mesh with the PureBase 500DX, both the CPU and the GPU idled one degree cooler in the Lancol 2 mesh. During the 30 minute IDA64 stability test, the CPU was one degree cooler in the PureBase 500DX while there was no difference in the GPU temperatures between the two cases. So comparing the Lancol 2 mesh with the Inwin 216, the CPU idled one degree cooler and the GPU was two degrees cooler in the Inwin 216. Under the 30 minute IDA64 stability test, there was no difference in the maximum CPU temperature, while the GPU idled one degree cooler in the Inwin 216. Okay, so this tells me not only have the changes Lian Li made with the Lancol 2 mesh improved the temperatures compared to the original Lancol 2, but they brought them on par with some of the other high performing cases which I have tested thermally recently. Okay, so what about air cooling? Have the changes with the Lancol 2 mesh also improved the case's air cooling potential? So I had done a, an air cool build with the original Lancol 2 using an NHD 15 and all Noctia fans. Um, the GPU this time was mounted in a horizontal orientation because you weren't able to mount it vertically with the NHD 15. So this time at idle, surprisingly the Lancol 2 mesh, the CPU actually idled three degrees hotter, while the GPU idled one degree cooler. Under the IDA64 stability test, both the CPUs were the same temperature, 94 degrees C, so a bit hotter than what we were getting with the 360 millimeter AIO, while the GPU temperatures were significantly cooler with an Lancol 2 mesh at 66 degrees C compared to 69. So based on these results, it doesn't seem you're going to get as much benefit with the new changes in the Lancol 2 mesh if you're going to cool your CPU using an air cooler, and there was no difference to that temperature under load. However, the improved airflow through the case, which I think is mostly focused on GPU cooling, was better in this case by a significant amount of 3 degrees C. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to test was how restrictive the front panel is. And we've probably already answered this question given that we've shown that the Lancol 2 mesh gives better cooling than the original Lancol 2. The chances are it's the front panel that was the problem. Um, when I removed the front panel in my original Lancol 2 build, 
the CPU temperatures came down by 4 degrees at idle and 5 degrees under load and the GPU temperatures came down by 1 degree both at idle and under load. So that was a very significant difference and I'm not recommending that you go and take off your front panels from your cases because obviously they serve as a dust filter as well. But the idea behind this test is to actually see how restrictive the front panel is and the original Lancol 2 panel was very restrictive. So removing the mesh from panel from the front of the Lancol 2 mesh, the CPU idled one degree cooler, while under load, the temperature reduced down by two degrees C. GPU temperatures, there was no difference with removing the front panel at idle, while under load, the temperature reduced by one degree C. Looking at the noise levels, there was a one decibel saving on noise by removing the front panel. So the difference in seat temperature savings by removing the front panel here were much less than what we were getting with the original Lancol 2, telling me that the front panel is much less restrictive and this is probably the reason we're seeing better temperatures in this case. Next question I wanted to answer was, does removing the hard drive cage actually improve temperatures? So what I did was I added the hard drive cage back into my original build. And my original build was the Galahad AIO on the front as intake and the five case fans as LL120 fans, two at the bottom as intake and the other three as exhaust with the GPU in the vertical orientation. So at idle, adding the hard drive cage in increased the CPU temperature by one degree while it didn't make any difference to the GPU temperatures. Under load, surprisingly, the CPU was actually two degrees cooler with the hard drive cage in place and there was no difference to the GPU temperatures. However, noise increased by one decibel, both at idle and under load by having the hard drive cage in place. Okay, so I think summing that up, um, having the hard drive cage in place doesn't seem to adversely affect the temperatures as I thought it would do. And particularly having it right up against the radiator. Important to say during my test the hard drive cage was empty and importantly as well there is other reasons you may want to remove your hard drive cage. Having it removed means you have much more space for cable management at the bottom of the case particularly if you're going to use cable extensions it can be quite tricky to get them all put away in the small gap between the hard drive cage and the power supply. And again, if you're a first time builder and you're not planning on using the hard drive cage, I would strongly recommend you remove it for an easy building experience. Next question I wanted to answer was the little removable brackets beside the radiator. Having it off, does it actually affect the airflow through the case and affect the temperatures? Like with the hard drive cage, there's other reasons you're going to want to have this bracket on. In my original Lancol 2 build, I had it off and you could see all the cables at the bottom of the case and it looked really untidy. Being able to have it on was great and you weren't able to see that. Okay, so with my original build, which I've already described, the only difference was this little radiator bracket on and off. Okay, so adding the radiator bracket back in, the CPU idled one degree hotter with no difference to GPU temperatures or noise. Under load, there was no difference to the CPU temperatures while the GPU ran one degree cooler and this time there was one decibel less noise. So again, I think summing that up, there's no significant difference to having that little bracket on or off. The reason I tested it was sometimes a small change like that can significantly affect the airflow through the case and make a difference to temperatures, but it doesn't seem to be the case and this is purely aesthetic. Having it off, you're going to see the cables at the bottom Having it on, they're nicely hidden, but no difference to your temperatures. Okay, next question to answer, does it make a difference if you mount your graphics card in a vertical or a horizontal orientation? So looking at the results here, with the graphics card mounted horizontally, it idled one degree cooler, while under load, there was a whopping four degree reduction in maximum GPU temperatures. Looking at the CPU temperatures at idle, it was one degree cooler in the vertical orientation, while there was no difference under load and no real significant difference to the noise levels under load as well. Okay, so these results are really interesting. In a few other cases I've tested recently, having the graphics card mounted vertically has definitely reduced temperatures by improving airflow through the case. Definitely, it seems in the Lancol 2 mesh, you're going to want to mount your graphics card in a horizontal orientation if you're looking purely at thermals. 
I do think particularly the Strix card that I have looks much better in a vertical orientation, but a whopping four degree reduction in temperatures under load would really encourage you to mount it horizontally in this case. Okay, next question to answer is, do the two fans below the GPU as intake actually improve temperatures? And when I did testing in the original Lancool 2, I got a two degree reduction in both CPU and GPU temperatures under load with inclusion of the fans. And some of the other cases I've tested recently, having fans at the bottom actually hindered temperatures in the case, surprisingly. Okay, so looking at the Lancool 2 mesh, first of all, in the vertical orientation, at idle, there was no difference in CPU temperatures having removed the fans at the bottom of the case, while the GPU actually ran one degree cooler with the fans removed. Under load, the CPU was one degree cooler, while there was no difference in GPU temperatures having removed the fans. Looking at the noise levels, having the fans removed, the PC obviously ran quieter, two decibel giving at idle and one decibel giving at load. So it seems if you're gonna mount your graphics card in a vertical orientation, having the fans below it actually seemed to hurt rather than help with your thermals for both your CPU and your GPU. So it was a different story when it came to the fans below horizontally mounted GPUs. So at idle, having removed the fans, the GPU actually ran one degree hotter. No difference to the CPU temperatures. Under load, the CPU ran one degree cooler with the fans removed, while having the fans in place, the GPU ran two degrees cooler. And we, again, we got one decibel of extra noise by having the fans installed. So I think I would say here, if you're gonna mount your graphics card horizontally, you're probably better to install the fans below because the two degree saving on GPU temperatures is gonna offset the one degree increase in CPU temperatures. Okay, next thing I wanted to test was does installing an M.2 expander card below the GPU adversely affect the GPU temperatures? But it makes sense you're blocking the GPU's intake fan, the chances are the temperatures are going to increase. So while this isn't specific to the Lancool 2 mesh, I did cover this as an option in my Lancool 2 mesh build guide. So I thought it was a good opportunity to test it now. So looking at the temperatures, adding an M.2 expander card below the GPU in the horizontal orientation, because the GPU has to be in horizontal orientation to use the expander card, made no difference to the CPU and GPU temperatures at idle. Under load, it was a completely different story with the CPU temperature increasing by one degree while the GPU increased by a whopping five degrees. So I think it's important to know if you are gonna install a card below your GPU, you're blocking its intake fan and the temperatures are gonna go up by a significant amount. The other thing I tested here was I had mentioned that my M.2 expander card had a very noisy fan and I always left it off when it was installed in the build. So my build without the fan turned on, the M.2 expander card had a noise level of 35 decibels at idle. Turning the fan on at idle increased that all the way up to 45 decibels. So a whopping 10 decibels increase in noise by turning the fan on. Um, the M.2 drives were very comfortable running with the fan off and actually had much lower temperatures than the ones installed directly in the motherboard. Okay, next thing to test was, are the case fans that come with a Lancool 2 mesh any good? So to do this, I set up an air-cooled build with Noctua's NHD 15. In one of the builds, I used all Noctua fans, so three fans in the front as intake, two at the bottom as intake, and the other three fans at the top and the rear as exhaust. In the second build, I replaced the three intake fans with the stock fans that came with the case. So the builds are the same, apart from the three fans at the front are not chain one, and the other are the ones that come with the Lancol 2 mesh. So looking at how that affected the temperatures, at idle there was no difference in the CPU temperatures, while the GPU idled one degree hotter with the stock case fans. Importantly, no difference to the noise recorded. Under load, there was no difference to the CPU temperatures, while the GPU temperatures were actually one degree cooler using the stock case fans. And as well, interestingly, under load, the noise levels were actually one decibel less when using the stock case fans. Okay, so what this tells me is not only do the case fans that come with the case look great, but they perform really well. 
and it was really surprising that they actually outperformed the Keen of Case fans, Noctia, in both thermals and acoustics. So you no need to change the three fans that come at the front of the case. They perform really, really well. Okay, so as I've mentioned, one of the nice things about this case is all the options it offers. And when it comes to your front IIO, you can have a set to intake with the fans in front of the radiator in push configuration or as a pull configuration behind the radiator. So I wanted to see did that make any difference to the temperatures. Okay, so looking at the CPU temperatures, having the fans in a push configuration, so in front of the radiator, actually resulted in better CPU temperatures. The CPU was one degree cooler at both idle and under load. GPU temperatures, no difference at idle, while a push configuration, the GPU actually ran slightly hotter by one degree. So it was a different story when we came to noise levels and having the fans in a pull configuration actually were associated with lower noise levels. So one decibel saving at idle and two decibels saving under load. So it does appear that having your fans in a push configuration, so the fans next to the mesh panel, then the radiator, it will give you slightly better CPU temperatures in this case at the expense of slightly more noise. And that makes sense. The fans are right up against the mesh panel compared to being further back behind the radiator. So that's good to know that the push configuration is going to give you better temperatures in this case, because in my opinion, it's the only way you should set up your front IO. I think it would be an absolute crime to have a case which has built in RGB controls a lovely mesh front panel where you can see your front fans and then to go ahead and install them behind a radiator where you've just a plain back panel on the front of the case. Okay, next thing I wanted to test was did adding a second set of fans onto the radiator in a push-pull configuration improve temperatures over push alone? So I used the Galahad AIO for this test and as I didn't have a second set of Galahad fans, I used some Noctia fans which are optimized for static pressure on the rear of the radiator in a pull configuration with the Galahad fans in the front in a push configuration. So looking at the idle temperatures, surprisingly the CPU temperatures at idle were actually one degree hotter in the push-pull configuration while the GPU temperature decreased by one degree in push-pull. Interestingly, no difference in noise levels at idle. Under load, it was a different story. The CPU um, was one degree cooler and the GPU two degrees cooler with a push-pull configuration. And actually this was slightly quieter than the push alone. So these results are interesting. I normally find adding a second set of fans onto your radar will improve temperatures by somewhere between one and three degrees. Um, but normally that's at the expense of extra noise. And it, maybe it's because I added the Noctia fans onto the radar that we didn't get any increase in extra noise, but improved temperatures. It's interesting the GPU temperatures improved as well, and that must just be with much more intake coming into the case. We're getting much more cool air coming through the radiator. Whereas if less air is moving, most of the air coming out will be hot. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to test was does having your front mounted radiator in a tubes up versus a tubes down position make any difference to the temperatures, but most importantly to the noise? And the reason I want to test this is there was a recent Gamers Nexus video where he has recommended that front mounted radiators should be mounted in a tubes down position. And the reason for that is purely related to noise. In the tubes up position, the top bit where the tubes are is the highest part of the loop and there's potential for air to trap there causing noise. In the video, he described other configurations where the AIO life was potentially reduced and some of them were potentially damaging to the CPU as well. This wasn't one of the damaging ones. This wasn't one where your life of your AIO was potentially going to be reduced. There was only a potential for noise. And in the build video I made, I described very clearly why I had decided to mount the radiator tubes up. And that was based on weighing up all the pros and cons. And the big con for mounting the tubes down was aesthetics. Having the tubes down the bottom meant I was going to have to leave the little radiator cover off. So the tubes would be on a full display, all the cables at the bottom of the case would be on full display, and it was going to look absolutely awful. The tubes were also, they just about would reach to the bottom. They were going to be at a really straight, awkward looking angle, and it was going to look terrible. So I had to weigh up the potential for noise, which I've never experienced, versus what I would class an awful looking build. And I went for 
the one that looked good and that I've never had any problems with before. But despite that, I've had numerous comments of people telling me my radiator is upside down. So they haven't factored everything into the decision making, they've just followed that video and there's no other reason for doing it apart from that. So part of the reason for doing this test was to see, does it actually cause any additional noise? So I wasn't able to test everything that I wanted with this. When I managed to get the radiator installed in a tubes down position, I wasn't able to install the graphics card in a horizontal position because the tube stretched directly across the graphics card, meaning you couldn't install the graphics card with the Galahad AIO. Maybe another AIO with longer tubes, you would have been able to manage it, but not with this AIO. However, in that very stretched position, I was able to get the graphics card installed in a vertical orientation. There was a lot of stretch on the cable. The cables were pushing on the RAM and they were pushing on the graphics card. And it wasn't something I would have been comfortable leaving in that position for any length of time. So I did the chest very quickly and then I very quickly turned the radiator round in the tubes back into a top position. So are we worrying about nothing? Let's see. Okay, so looking at the idle temperatures with the tubes up, the CPU idled one degree cooler while the GPU idled one degree hotter. Under the IDA64 stability test, there was no difference in the CPU temperatures while the GPU temperatures were one degree cooler with the tubes down. So I think you could say really no significant difference in the temperatures. Looking at the noise levels under both idle and load, there was absolutely no difference. I'm gonna play you a little clip of the audio recorded on modified with the tubes up and the tubes down to help you make your own mind up that there's absolutely no difference in the audio levels. Okay, so hopefully that's cleared things up as to why I built in a particular way I had done. I'm not arguing with what GamerNexus says. I think if there's no downsides to installing your radiator in a tubes down position, you should definitely do it. The only problem was with the Galahad AIO, in this case, there's lots of downsides. And I think potentially quite dangerous ones with it, given the amount of tension we were putting on the components in this case. Okay, next thing I wanted to test was does having a 330 millimeter radiator in the front versus a 240 millimeter radiator attached to an AO make any difference when it comes to temperatures. So to do this, I compared my original build with a Galahad AIO at the front to a Corsair 240 millimeter AIO. In below the radiator, um, I mounted an additional LL120 fan for additional intake. So we had three 120 millimeter fans at the front, two of them on the radiator and one down below it. Okay, so looking at the temperatures, definitely the 360 millimeter radiator gives significantly lower idle temperatures at 35 versus 39 degrees when we look at the CPU and there was no difference to the GPU idle temperatures at 31. Um, in this circumstance, the um, 360 millimeter radiator was significantly quieter by four decibels. Really surprising results under load. The maximum CPU temperatures was identical between the 240 millimeter radiator with the 120 fan below it and the 360. And even more interesting was that the GPU temperatures were actually better with the 240 millimeter radiator. And under load conditions, there was a four decibel reduction in noise with the 240 millimeter radiator. Okay, so this result really surprised me. I wasn't expecting the 240 millimeter radiator to be the winner, but it clearly was. It gave the same CPU temperatures under load and actually cooler GPU temperatures with less noise. So it wasn't even a close fight. It was the clear winner. Um, the GPU temperatures make sense because down the bottom of the case, you're bringing cool air into the GPU rather than air that's been through a radiator. Although I can't explain the CPU temperatures being the same. It just must mean that the Ryzen 9 3900X was able to be cooled equally well with the 240 versus the 360. It is, however, a completely different story if you want to put that AIO on the top. And that would be the most common place people are gonna be putting a 240 millimeter AIO on this case. They'll put it on the top as an exhaust. So let's have a look at that 
With the 240 on the front as an intake, the CPU idled one degree cooler at 39 versus 40 on the top as an exhaust. GPU was one degree cooler with the radiator as exhaust at the top and that makes more sense because you're bringing cooler in at the front and the GPU is only getting cooler rather than air that's been through a radiator. Where we did get a massive difference in temperatures was under load. So having the radiator as a front intake, the CPU was only up to a maximum of 85. Having the radiator at the top as an exhaust, the CPU reached the heights of 91 degrees C, so a difference of 6 degrees, which is absolutely massive. GPU, as we'd expect, to be slightly cooler with the radiator on the top as exhaust at 65 versus 67 with the GPU on the front as an intake. So CPU ran 6 degrees cooler, while the GPU increased by 2 degrees by having the radiator on the front. Noise levels are really interesting as well. Having your radiator on the top as an exhaust was 3 decibels louder under load and 1 decibel louder at idle. So this is very clear. If you're going to put a 240mm radiator into this case, it should go on the front as an intake. Okay, so that brings us on to the question, if you're going to get this case, what is the best cooler for it? Is it an AIO or is it a premium air cooler? Okay, so you've already seen all these results in some of the other questions, but I put them together to answer this particular question. So I think the key things with the 360mm AIO, you're getting low temperatures and low noise under idle conditions. With the air cooler, the premium air cooler, importantly to mention the Nokia NHD 15, you're also getting low noise levels, but slightly higher idle temperatures. But probably what's more important is to look at how the cooler performs under extreme loads. So the 240 and the 360 in the front performed equally well when it comes to CPU temperatures. Obviously, GPU temperatures were slightly better with the 240 and the fan below it. Um, the 240 on the top as an exhaust is just a bad idea. Don't do it. And the CPU air cooler really struggled to cool the Ryzen 9 3900X. It reached a maximum of 94 degrees. So I think factoring all this in together, my recommend method of cooling for this case would be to have a 240 millimeter radiator on the front as intake with the fans in the front in a push configuration. I would then recommend one fan in below that as an intake fan. And given the fact that this is going to be a 240 millimeter radiator, you are going to be able to mount it in the tubes down position like I did and still have that little radiator bracket in place keeping everything looking nice and tidy. So that would be my recommended cooling configuration for the Landcool 2 mesh. Okay, so I'll put a summary up of all the test data from the 17 different configurations. So you can go ahead and pause the video if you want to look at things in more detail. Okay, so if you haven't worked it out by now, I really liked the Landcool 2 mesh. And what's not to like about it, I think it's a great looking case with excellent build quality, with good thermals, and for all the features it offers, it's an absolute bargain at the price. And I think I'm going to go as far and say, at the moment, this is my case of the year for 2020. So we'll see if anything can come along before the end of the year and beat it. Okay, so hopefully you find this video useful. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments section what you thought about it. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to grow the channel and just hitting that button will really help me out. Thanks for watching.